TensorFlow has been one of the most used machine learning frameworks over the last few years. With version 2.4, TensorFlow introduced support for Apple's ML Compute framework. Apple's framework allows you to use the CPU and GPU of Macs to accelerate neural network operations. In this video, we will use TensorFlow 2.4 on the new MacBook Air with the M1 chip. We will also compare the performance with the Intel-based Macs and a Windows laptop. Hello, Carlos here from Dynamic Typing. In this channel, we talk about machine learning and programming languages. Make sure to subscribe if you are interested in these topics. Let's get into the main topic of this video, TensorFlow 2.4 using the new Apple's ML Compute. ML Compute requires macOS 11 Big Sur, so if you have an older version of macOS, you will not be able to use it. Have in mind that all Macs with Apple Silicon already come from the factory with macOS Big Sur. We installed TensorFlow 2.4 in a MacBook Air based model with Apple Silicon. If you want to test it, make sure to install the TensorFlow package over Python 3.8.2 that comes with macOS Big Sur. I'll leave a link in the video description for the installation procedures. For comparison purpose, we also tested two other laptops, a MacBook Pro with Intel processor and macOS Catalina, and a Dell XPS 17 with a Core i7 and an RTX 2060. It is also important to mention that the MacBook Pro tested does not have ML Compute, and therefore we couldn't test ML Compute on the Intel architecture. Leave a comment if you want us to make that test. We used the convolutional neural network example from the TensorFlow website, modified with the recommendations of the TensorFlow for macOS repository. I'll leave the link to this example in the video description. Our performance comparison will look at the training time per epoch of the CNN. Let's have a look at the results. The base model MacBook Air with Apple Silicon, when using only the CPU, takes around 12 seconds per training epoch. While processing, the MacBook Air uses around 6 watts on the performance cores, using the equivalent of 1.2 CPUs, while the efficient cores and the GPU remain barely in use. If we set TensorFlow to use the GPU, the training time decreases to 10 seconds per epoch. The CPU usage decreases to around 80%. The performance cores consume only 1.2 watts, while the GPU uses up to 4 watts. It is important to mention that the MacBook Air with Apple Silicon is passively cooled. It doesn't have a fan and that the base model has a 7-core GPU, but you can also get one with an 8-core GPU. When we compare the results of the MacBook Air with the MacBook Pro running the Intel processor, we see that the ML Compute, together with the new Apple Silicon, make a huge difference. The MacBook Pro with Intel processor is almost three times lower than the MacBook Air. During the training, the MacBook Pro processor got to 99 degrees Celsius before the fans kicked in. The fans, after a few seconds, went to their full speed, making considerable noise. Finally, let us look at how our Windows laptop did. Using the 45W i7 CPU, the Dell XPS 17 took almost as much as the MacBook Pro, which has a 25W CPU. Like the MacBook Pro, the fans went full spin while running the test. Using the RTX 2060 mobile of the XPS 17 took 11 seconds per epoch, which is between the CPU and the GPU results of the MacBook Air. What we can see here is that the Intel processors are lagging way behind the new M1 chip in the machine learning tasks. More impressively, the base model MacBook Air using GPU for training beats the RTX 2060 mobile of the XPS 17 while being completely silent. Combined with the fact that the battery life on these new Macs is very good, they now represent a compelling option for machine learning practitioners on the go. What do you think? Are you considering buying a new Mac? Leave a comment below. Did you like this video? Make sure to hit the like button if you did. Subscribe if you are interested in this type of content. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for content. By the way, I made a test on the new Macs with Apple Silicon running Python natively and over the Rosetta emulation layer. This video is showing up on the screen now. Check it out and I see you in the next video.